the surface. Could just mean that we actually have a hippo hanging out down below. We'll see who's over here today. Now I do see plenty of these large grayish whitish birds. These are pinkback pelicans. Pinkback pelicans get their name from the pink spot that appears on their back during their mating season. It's a little bit like they're blushing out one another. Birds like pinkback pelicans are what we call an indicator species. Since those birds can fly, it's pretty easy for them to move around. So I try to be some of the first to leave if something is wrong with their environment. They want the first indications in an area just isn't as healthy as it could be. Now keep track of this other river here see if we find any hippos. However, hippos are actually nocturnal animals. They sleep under the water and naturally know when to rise up the surface to grab a breath of air. So they love to have their ears, eyes, and nose on the top of their heads. That's when they barely have to breach the surface and grab the air that they need. Looks like we have a hippo up ahead though running around the river's floor. And I say running because although hippos can't swim, they actually much prefer to run or walk across the river's floor instead. The hippos are very, very important to their ecosystem. It's a what you call a group of hippos. All probably sleeping right now. We have some more fun going over to look here too. These are Nile crocodiles. They're all full grown Nile crocodile and about 16 to 18 feet long. And these are actually as long as a giraffe is tall. Giraffes spend the majority of their day eating and it's just to help out with their very unique digestive systems. Giraffes are what we call a ruminant and a ruminant is an animal with a four-chambered stomach. For those four chambers to work properly, they need to be constantly in use so that these giraffes are always eating. Giraffes are the largest ruminant. They're also going to be the mammals with the highest blood pressure and as you can probably guess, the tallest animals in the world. The leg our giraffe are shades of 18 to 20 feet tall and they're actually as tall as 6 foot from the moment that they're born. Because the Sikorpa trap gets the name of a tower, but we like to call it the Fred Giraffe, the Tower of Terror. Now the giraffes that we're going to see here today are Maasai Giraffe. And you can tell Maasai is only some species of giraffe just by looking at the pattern of their coat. Maasai Giraffe tend to have spots with a little bit more of an irregular and jazzy pattern. And they have a very large impact on their savanna home by eating these tree leaves. It really is going to keep the trees healthy. Also creates lots of gaps that allow for sunlight to flow through. And when they eat these leaves, they'll use that prehensile tongue they share with the okapi to grab their food. And giraffes spend so much time eating, they can protect their tongue from the sun. That's why it's that purplish bluish color you might be able to see on some of the giraffes here. It's just to help stop their tongues from eating supper. And their tongues are pretty long like the okapis. Actually, if y'all hold out your arm and look at the length of your forearm, that's about the length of these giraffes' tongues. So anyone know what sound the giraffe makes? Y'all are in this next silence. I heard the vocal cords. They don't make any noise. And this is what they'll spend the majority of their day doing, is eating off the trees, like we can see here. Now as we keep moving along here, let's get some more friends coming up over on our left. These are other snare traps that we see at the savanna, decorate their home pizza. We also have some sable ants out there on our left, and they get their name for that sable color of their coat. They're going to be one of the few ants out there in a fight or flight situation, choose the fight. That's why we chose them as the emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Preserve. They are very, very brave. Now as we head past these giraffes, we're going to also pass by these tall pointed structures. These are turbot mounds. They're porous and as hard as concrete from baking in the sun all day. Lots of animals like to use them, sort of like a scratching post. When they end up getting a little bit more worn down from that, we'll see smaller ants that perch on top to look for stubs. This allows them to look for any potential predators that may be near. Unlike the animals that we saw a little bit earlier in the forest, who primarily will rely on camouflage to protect themselves. Here in the savanna, the animals tend to be much more aligned upon their speed and agility to evade any potential threats. They always try to be ready and on the go even when they're asleep. For example, giraffes don't lie down like we do when we sleep. They'll sit like the giraffe we have up ahead here, or more often they stand. I don't know exactly why the animals have this or what purpose they serve, but again, something can help out with thermal regulation, kind of help keep them either cool or hot depending on their temperature outside. 
do this one. We're gonna keep moving along past these giraffe here though. Oh. We see some more animals up ahead. <laughs> we look on top of that hill there coming up on our right. There's plenty of wildebeest hanging out up there. They're in the grazing. <laughs> Cody, look. Hold it.
Feels good though.
Yeah, sleep with, uh, stay with mommy then. <laughs>